Hello there, good evening and welcome to the main news around 18 hours. And these are the top stories from the TV1 newsroom. Donors have threatened to request individual refunds from the Zambia National Farmers Union of wrongly spent funds. More than 8,000 universities of Zambia students that failed to pay their tuition fees have been allowed to sit for their examinations. Coming up in sports news, 24 out of 26 players have reported to camp as the Zambia national women's football team regroups ahead of the Egypt friendly this month. Hello there, my name is Samuel Machishi with the main news. Donors have threatened to request individual refunds from the Zambia National Farmers Union ZNFU of wrongly spent funds in accordance to the bilateral agreement. And the donors have further advised the ZNFU board to probe corruption allegations within the union. This follows the release of a special audit report by KPMG Finland suggesting fraudulent activities in the ZNFU. In a statement to TV2 News, the Embassy of Sweden, Finland, said yesterday they met the ZNFU board to review the contents of special audit carried out in feb February. The donors say they are looking forward to see how the union will handle the matter as this will ensure that Zambian farmers benefit from the funds. The donors say that the findings in the report are of serious concern and the board has been advised to follow up the findings internally and with law enforcement agencies. Sweden, We Effect and Finland have since placed zero tolerance on corruption. An embassy of Sweden trade promotion and information officer Anna Loski says the donors are expected to hold a press briefing on the matter tomorrow. And the Zambia Revenue Authority ZRA has suspended 15 employees for misconduct pending investigations by the Internal Audit Affairs. The 15 suspended officers are all from the NOLA office. ZRA Corporate Communication Manager Oliver Anzala says the suspension, which has led into investigations, is as a result of alleged dishonest conduct which borders on the integrity of ZRA. Mr. Zala says the officers are alleged to have received bribes from clearing agents in order to facilitate quick processing of entries and undervaluation of goods. Mr. Zala said this in a statement to TV2 News in Lusaka today. And Mr. Zala has also disclosed that ZRA has also suspended 27 licenses of clearing agents on similar allegations and the matter has been reported to law enforcement agencies for a thorough investigation. He said that the authority will always strive to conduct business with the highest levels of integrity and transparency. And Mr. Zala said that the authority will not condone any form of dishonest conduct or misconduct either by its officers, clearing agents or clients. In other news, the European Union EU says Zambia should explore ways of promoting efficiency in the consumption of energy in different sectors of the economy. EU heads of infrastructure section Adam Gronz Grodzik says EU's technical support to Zambia is aimed at reducing the electricity supply deficit in the country. Mr. Grodzik was speaking during a workshop on energy efficiency quick win action project held at Intercontinental Hotel in Lusaka. And director in the Department of Energy at the Ministry of Energy and Water Development, Oscar Kalumiana, says the project is one of government's efforts to address the energy deficit in the country. Through the extrapolation methodologies, we're going to say if we're going to apply it this energy efficiency measures at national level what is going to be achieved so in parallel we develop uh, in cooperation with the ministry and energy efficiency to support energy efficiency policy this is going to be based on some specific uh, let's say statistical data existing ones we're going to make our more precise uh, estimations on the um, quick wins um, profits that we're going to have in terms of energy efficiency in each in each specific activity that we are going to implement at the industry level, at the building level, and then we are going to propose a roadmap from the ministry how this is going to be generated at national level. With this project we want to identify to start with 14 projects that we can start working on in which we can make savings on electricity. And we are looking at mainly four sectors. The first one is industries that use a lot of electricity. This includes industries like the mines, like the cement industry, like the sugar industry. A small saving in the mines on electricity can actually cover a lot of households. So there we want to make some savings. We also are looking at areas like street lighting, 
and we have in this case uh, discussing the consultants met with um, uh, the Lusaka City Council. They also registered, met with the um, uh, works department, the department of works at the Ministry of Works. The project is under the EU and Zambian government cooperation aimed at identifying potential energy efficient projects from both the public and private sectors. Works on the construction of Charleston Police Station in Osaka have reached roof level. Avic International, the contractor, is optimistic that works will com be completed by the end of January 2017. A check by TV2 News at the construction site found several men busy working. Our reporter was there and brings us more in this report. This is how far works on the construction of the new Charleston Police Station have gone. The project, which is being done at a total cost of 12 million kwacha, is expected to cushion the problem of inadequate office space for police officers. Uh, the idea is to ensure that apart from housing infrastructure for our officers under Ministry of Home Affairs, we want to ensure that even in terms of office accommodation, we improve the structure so that our officers can operate in very conducive environments. So as Minister of Home Affairs, we are very impressed. The eight months project is scheduled to be completed and handed over to government by January 2017. Shalene Young is a project coordinator from AVIC International. She is confident that works here will be delivered on time. Uh, you can you can have a look of uh, the, the slab on first floor has already been done and uh, right now we are focusing on the plastering of the uh, interior wall. Yes, that's what we, we have currently done right now. Um, actually, I think uh, our, expect, our expectation is going to at the end of January 2017. Yeah. Government is constructing more police stations in a number of areas across the country. Some of these areas include Chiwombo and Kitwa districts, among others. Lufola Nkowani, TV2 News, in Lusaka. Trial in the matter where eight opposition UPND cadres in Kitwa and the Copper Belt have been charged with aggravated robbery has failed to kick off. This is because the state is still waiting for further instructions from the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, on how the matter should proceed. At the court has, and the court has said Tuesday, September 13th, 2016, in which it will make a ruling on the preliminary inquiry raised by the defense team representing the UPND cadres. The defense team, led by lawyer Tom Shamakamba, wants the court to determine if the eight cadres, who include losing Chimwemwe constituency candidate Ronald Manenga, have a case to answer. Meanwhile, Magistrate Leonard Tembo, who is handling the matter, has summoned the officer in charge at Kamfinsa State Prison to appear before him. Magistrate Tembo wants an explanation from prison authorities on why the eight suspects have been detained in the Pinock block section at the prison. When the matter came up for hearing today, the defense team complained that their clients are detained in the Pinock section that usually houses condemned inmates. Magistrate Tembo said he will only make a ruling on the continued detention of the UPND members under the penal block upon hearing submissions from the prison's authorities. The UPND cadres are alleged to have stolen electrical commission, of, electrical commission of Zambia materials last month that among other things included money and cell phones. The eight are remanded in custody as the offense is non bailable You're watching the Pass of Television main news at 18 hours. Let's pause for a break. Still ahead in the news, 8,000 UNSA students allowed to sit for exams. Stick around. We'll come back to the main news. More than 8,000 University of Zambia owns the students that failed to pay their tuition fees have been allowed to sit for their examinations. University of Zambia Students Union UNSASO President Jones Mwelwa has confirmed the development to TV2 News. Mr. Mwelwa says management decided to allow the students to sit for exams after a payment plan was devised to ensure that the affected students paid their fees before the release of the results. Meanwhile, UNSA Public Relations Manager Damaseke Chibale has appealed to students to follow proper channels of airing their grievances as the institution is not interested in turning anyone away. Our students are aware that uh, whenever they have challenges, uh, they are supposed to uh, channel their grievances through the Office of the Academic Affairs. And uh, from there, there is a unit under the Academic Affairs uh, uh, Office that deals with the students' um, you know, queries, or challenges as far as uh, school fees are concerned and so each case is dealt with according to its merits and demerits 
and um, we will just appeal to those students that uh, please they need to use the right channel and uh, the universe has been handling these cases for quite a long time and we've been effectively dealing with these cases internally and uh, we have effective processes of dealing with them. So as the University of Zambia, we are committed to a mandate of uh, providing uh, higher education services to every Zambian, irrespective of their different circumstances. In other news stories, uh, works around the presidential barrier sites are progressing well with almost landscaping completed. National Heritage Conservation Commission Manager Information and Public Relations Isaac Kanguya says more than 360,000 kwacha has been spent on landscaping. Mr. Kanguya also says the construction of an ablution block has been completed. We have a report. This is the presidential barrier sites. It houses three of Zambia's former presidents, and these are Dr. Frederick Chiluba, Dr. Levi Patrick Monawasa, and Michael Chilofiasata. The mausoleum of the second and the third Republican president, Dr. Frederick Chiluba and Dr. Levi Patrick Monawasa, have been completed. Dr. Chiluba's mausoleum is constructed like a chapel because he was the president that declared Zambia a Christian nation. All of us as Zambians uh, know that uh, the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation came as a result of uh, you know, uh, Dr. Chiluba's uh, reign and uh, he declared this nation as a Christian nation and as such the design of his mausoleum is that of a chapel. But uh, one also interesting uh, item that I think people will need to go and uh, see at the mausoleum, of course, is we've put uh, a necktie right in front uh, of the of, of the mausoleum, also to indicate to Zambians that you know our former president, Dr. Chiruba, also was uh, a smart president. He was always uh, you know in suits. So the one for Dr. Monawasa looks like a stool, for he died a sitting president, and it has pillars that look like boots to show how much he tried to stamp out corruption in the country. Because he died as a sitting president, that's how come designers from Works and Supply uh, decided probably they could do, use a design of a, of a stool because uh, he was a, a sitting president. And uh, when you look also at the stairs that uh, lead to the mausoleum, there are, there are eight in total, looking at um, the number of years that um, he ruled. And then uh, also the pillars that are um, uh, around the, the the, the mausoleum itself uh, also uh, resemble a, a boot in terms of uh, his fight um, against, uh, against corruption. The presidential barrier site has become a tourism attraction as people continue to flock here. That is why government is constructing toilets here for the public to use. Um, the commission, with the help of uh, government, um, uh, spent about 360000 on the landscaping of uh, that area. Um, then uh, also the ablution block um, has also been completed and uh, the commission spent, um, uh, government raised money and the commission spent about um, uh, 185,000 uh, to ensure that the toilet um, is complete. One would not understand why the structures are built in the way they are unless they pay a visit and have a clear understanding of the structures. Leando Hamwala, TV2 News in Lusaka. Lusaka's garden compound residents have welcomed the indoor residue spraying exercise launched by the Lusaka City Council. They say the exercise has come at a time when the area is faced with the challenge of mosquitoes. The Lusaka City Council recently launched the indoor residue spraying exercise to eradicate mosquitoes in the city. We have details in this report. Garden compound is one township where mosquitoes have been a challenge to the residents. Residents say the parasites are many due to the presence of sewer dams and a stream that passes through the township. Recently, the Lusaka City Council commenced the indoor residual spraying exercise which is aimed at controlling mosquitoes in the city. And garden compound residents are happy with the exercise, stating that it will reduce the number of mosquitoes in the area. Yeah, it's a very good idea because they have to come up with a certain strategy to help the community. So it's a very good idea. In Canyon Tanks, you just spray my new by the Puino, the one I tap a Puino. The Mataona, Kuti, Puipakain, and our Puino Kain, and I won't know that spray Manquala Manuba. But what is that spray Manuba is Ambo Gona for Puino, Nishimbabu, our mosquito, Bamzo, as the Zabwe Rako Bans. Especially when I'm at the Mugait, Tilipakat, 
madamu na na stream ili kuchana so bands yani aja ni ali kodi ali ati kuti sana ah it is a good news and it's a welcome thing because they have to do that to prevent people from the malaria as you can see here in garden we have a lot of mosquitoes so they need to start that but before they have to make sure that the pools are also cleaned because even if they they, they start spraying the the houses the mosquito it it, it will not have it will give us a good uh, a good protection because the the pools are still dirty Meanwhile, some residents have appealed to the Lusaka City Council to sensitize people on the exercise to avoid misunderstanding. Uh, first and foremost, they have to sensitize. We need to sensitize people. We need to sensitize the community. We need to be aware that uh, the spring program is underway. Sensitization is better. It is hoped that the indoor residual spraying exercise will alleviate the growing number of mosquitoes which will prevent the possible cases of malaria in the city. Lucky Piri, reporting in Lusaka. The Australian government has donated medical equipment worth millions of US dollars to the University Teaching Hospital Pediatric Win. The donation was made after the decommissioning of a children's hospital in Perth to pave way for a new children's hospital, Princess Margaret Pediatrics Hospital, with other new equipment built at a cost of 1.2 billion US dollars. Premier of Western Australia Colin Barnett says Australia is delighted to donate the medical equipment, which is in perfect working condition, to Zambia as a gesture of the good relations they, that exist between Zambia and Australia. Mr. Barnett praised the well-trained medical personnel in Zambia, who he says only lacked good medical equipment to excel in their noble work. The pr Premier says the equipment is expected to start leaving Australia for Zambia in December 2016 at the expense of the Australian government. And Zambia's High Commissioner to Australia, George Zulu, says the equipment will go a long way in assisting medical personnel at UTH to do their work professionally. He says despite the highly trained and skilled medical personnel, Many of them ended up in other countries, such as Australia, due to lack of equipment and incentives. This is according to a statement released to TV2 News by First Secretary at the Zambian High Commission in Australia, Alec Banda. Let's pause for another break. When we do return, we have foreign and sports news. And now to foreign news. Niger has banned the exports of donkeys, warning that a threefold increase in trade, mainly to Asian countries, is threatening its donkey population. A government official has told the BBC that if the export continues, the animals will be decimated. China imports many donkey hides using the gelatin in medicinal tonics, aphrodisiacs and anti-aging creams. In August, neighboring Burkina Faso banned the export of donkey skins on similar grounds. And finally, in sports news, 24 out of 26 players have reported for camp as the Zambia national women's football team regroups ahead of the Egypt friendly this month. Coach Enala Simbe says Ellen Mubanga and Susan Banda will not join the team due to injury. Simbe says the two have since been replaced by Mayor Banda and Agnes Musefa. We have a report. These are the players that have reported for camp ahead of the Egypt friendly later this month. With fans slowly getting over the Chipolopolo's 1 0 draw against Kenya in the Gabon Afcon qualifier last Sunday, attention has turned to the women's national team ahead of their two international friendlies against Egypt. We are not going into this game to, to give Egypt a walk away. We are training so hard so that we can be recognized as Zambia. Probably beating uh, Egypt at our home will be the best result. Yeah, them they are preparing for AFCON, we are giving them a match, but because it's FIFA calendar, we need to be seen existing, we need to be seen doing something. And despite Zambia missing out on the Africa Women's Championship later this year, coach Enala Simbe is taking the two friendly games set for September 23rd and 25th seriously. Giving us this uh, training, uh, friendly, no, it shows that the association has put us in the program to, quali to participate in the future uh, qualifying matches, which we missed because of losing out to Zimbabwe and uh, we missed out the Olympics and it hurts to watch our friends when we can be there. So probably 
we work extra hard and pull up our stockings. But we are not taking this friendly lightly. The team, which comprised of some players from the under-17 side that participated at the 2014 World Cup in Costa Rica and Africa Women's Championship in Namibia, is also using the friendly to prepare for next year's qualifiers. Chikom Koka reporting for TV2 Sports News at the Olympic Youth Development Center, OIDC, in Lusaka. That Shipolo Polon team brings to the end of the news this hour. Let's quickly leave you with the headlines. Donors have threatened to request individual refunds from the Zambia National Farmers Union of wrongly spent funds in accordance to the bilateral agreement. And the donors have further advised the Zenithview boards to probe corruption allegations within the union. More than 8,000 University of Zambia students that failed to pay their tuition fees have been allowed to sit for the exams. University of Zambia Students Union President John Mwelwa says management decided to allow the students to sit for exams after a payment plan was devised to ensure that those affected pay their fees before the release of the results. And finally, 24 out of 26 players have reported for camp as the Zambia national women's football team regroups ahead of the Egypt friendly this month. Coach Enola Simbe says Ellen Mubanga and Susan Banda will not join the team due to injuries. That's about the news this hour. Stay tuned for more news coming up at 20 hours. That will be another main news. I'll see you then.